Um, I, uh, I met Jim in 1970. I guess I was around 23, and he was probably around 21. And uh, I met him at a poetry reading, and then I bumped into him like around 2 in the morning in front of the Chelsea Hotel. And I remember he was eating a water ice, and he was really cute. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we went out for coffee, and we walked, walked around, and walked around the city, and walked up and down 42nd Street. And, uh, you know, spent some time together. <laughs> this is sort of uh, toward the end of time spent. It's, this is actually a, a little thing from my own book, but it's about Jim. So. Jim and I spent a lot of time in Chinatown. Every outing with him was like a floating adventure, riding the high summer clouds. I liked to watch him interact with strangers. We would go to Hung Fat because it was cheap and the dumplings were good and he would talk to the old guys. You wait what they brought to the table, or else you pointed to somebody else's meal because the menu was in Chinese. They cleaned the tables by pouring hot tea all over them and wiping it up with a rag. The whole place had the fragrance of oolong. Sometimes Jim just picked up an abstract thread of conversation with one of those venerable looking old men who would then lead us through the labyrinth of their lives, through the opium wars and the opium dens of San Francisco. And then we would tramp from Mott to Mulberry to 23rd Street, back in our time, as if nothing ever happened. I gave him an auto harp for his birthday and wrote him long poems on my lunch break at Scribner's. I was hopeful he would be my boyfriend but as it turned out, that was an improbable expectation. I would never serve as the source of his inspiration, though in attempting to articulate the drama of my feelings, I became more prolific and I believe a better writer. Jim and I had some very sweet times. I'm sure there were downs as well, but my memories are served with nostalgia and humor. Ours were ragtag days and nights, as quixotic as Keats, and as rude as the lice we both came to suffer, each certain they originated from the other, as we went on undergone a tedious regimen of quell light shampooing in any one of the unmanned Chelsea Hotel bathrooms. Jim was unreliable, evasive, and sometimes too stoned to speak, but he was also kind, ingenuous, and a true poet. I knew he didn't love me, but I adored him anyway. Eventually, he just drifted away, leaving me a long lock of his red gold hair.